Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think I'm going to start my question from submissions made by your office. It has to do with, let me start first from recoveries from 2003 to 2014. From 2000 what? From 2003 to 2014. Yes. The, I mean, let me look for the document and then pass to you. Yeah, let me remind you that you're still on that oath. Yes. So I'll send you the summary for 2003 to 2014. I mean, how much was recovered, how much was transferred to the Federation account, we don't have information about that. And Mr. that's why I just felt like, okay. you know, I'm deliberately dividing your operation to this because your submission on 2015 to 2020 is more robust than this. That's what I'm trying to understand. Is it that you don't have records of activities for that period? No, Mr. Chairman, we have all the records. Um, these are monetary recoveries from 2003 to 2014. Uh, I believe the summary here includes both direct and indirect recoveries. But there are recoveries, recoveries that come to us either through um, our recovery account or through cash recoveries. Indirect recoveries has to do with recoveries that goes directly to the victim. Um, as I said during my last uh, session with you, Mr. Chairman, if you remember, I was saying that we have a lot of recoveries, for instance, for customs, for MPA that goes directly to them. But they are recoveries that we normally record. And I assure you that um, if given the opportunity, we'll go back and come up with uh, details regarding all these uh, figures. Okay, we will need that. Thank then, you. then I need to ask a question concerning the custody of recoveries. Because what you've described now gives the impression that um, you have non-government recoveries, which are individual recoveries yes. of belonging to state. Yes. Do you keep both in the same account, or they are separate accounts for government recoveries and then another one for well, non-government recoveries? they are recoveries, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we consider everybody to be a victim in that regard. Whether you are an individual, whether you are a corporate entity, whether you are a state government or federal government, you are all victims of, uh, of, uh, of crimes. What matters is uh, the final restitution to the victim. Regarding the federal government, for instance, you know, all recoveries goes to the consolidated revenue funds after the final for future. Regarding individual states, you know, they mention the accounts where those uh, monies are being transferred to them. And individuals also, the same thing applies to, 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 to their recoveries as well. When it comes to issues, um, there was a time within the life of uh, the Commission up to now in some certain instances where bank drafts are being recovered as well. So in that regard, you know, exhibits are being released, uh, you know, uh, 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 to the victim as, 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 as recovered. And in all of that, we tend to summarize them as part of the recoveries that we have uh, made as well. Okay, we're going to need more information that, because, because our concern is not about individual recoveries. Yes. It's about what has accrued to government and their utilization. No, certainly. So we'll need more information regarding that. So please, no, you no need to get, get, the records, get... The records are there. For okay, the figures so we need to have here, that record. We'll give you the you, record. So you need to send us an updated record, we especially will. for this year. We will. Then, um, let's talk about auctions. How does CFCC auction um, non-cash assets, non-cash um, forfeited assets? Uh, as at now, um, there are two guiding documents, the EFCC Establishment Act and the, and the regulation as uh, 2019 regulation that uh, the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation made. It is very clear regarding the processes. And in the EFCC, it is the, uh, the Commission Secretary that normally anchors such uh, auction exercise. I'm not aware whether we have done many. Uh, the Director of Asset for Future is here. I think the last one we did uh, was, was done and monies were remitted duly into the consolidated when was the last? When was the last auction done by the year? 2019. So how are such assets valued? Had you agree valuers, at what? Valuers were engaged. 
uh, Ministry of Works, for instance, when it comes to, to those instances, and uh, procedures were followed. I wasn't a member of that committee, but I think the Director Asset for Future is here if you need more explanation regarding how they carried out that exercise. But it was done. The monies uh, were, were all paid into the EFCC recovery account, and I think uh, we have moved the money into the consolidated revenue funds. Then um, you need to explain a little bit. Is CFCC involved in plea bargain? Plea bargain? Plea bargain, yes. Yes. How does it operate? Well, um, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act provides has certain provisions on plea bargain. Normally, in the EFCC, we also have our own um, guiding principles regarding that. We don't normally initiate plea bargains. Ours is to identify who committed a crime, how the crime was committed, and what crime was committed. At the end of it all, we charge um, to court to go and present our case. Normally, it is uh, the defense, through their counsel, that approach us that uh, they want to plea bargain. That means they want to bargain for a lesser sentence at the end of the conviction. And we normally have our own criteria that we normally follow. Before agreeing to any plea bargain, we will ensure that the process of crime is fully recovered and that it is in the interest of uh, the EFCC and the general public for us to enter into it. And then, of course, an agreement is signed and then we'll go back to the court to implement, and then uh, judgment is being given, and uh, conviction is uh, secured as well. Okay, comparing plea bargain with prosecution, which one do you think has been the most beneficial to the EFCC? Well, they are all prosecutions. They are all prosecutions. If you look at it, there are several things to consider. The course of the prosecution, the length of time involved, you, we have the problems associated with uh, high number of cases in the dockets of, uh, of the judges, etc., etc., And then, of course, uh, the remorsefulness of, uh, of the suspect or the, or the defendant are all, are all things that are being considered. Most importantly is the fact that uh, we tend to have full uh, recoveries before we agree to it. And we also uh, tend to push for custodial sentence, even if it is for one year, at least. In some instances, we even agree to six months but we tend to insist on custodial sentence so that at least it will serve as deterrence to others to know that, yes, despite that you have entered into plea bargain, which is uh, bargain for you to have lesser sentences, at least you are being punished for committing that crime. Very important and very um, key to what we try to achieve. Does the FCC maintain account with commercial banks? Before, yes. Now, I doubt much. None. No, no. None. Okay, great. Members, please. Yes, go ahead. Uh, the view of drawings from recovery account. Yes, sir. How do you see it? Withdrawals in the recovery accounts. Yes. Only recoveries account, I mean, uh, proceeds goes to that account. Steps have already been taken to ensure that only amounts or funds that are recovered are in the EFCC recovery account. And then afterwards, depending on what is determined in court, funds are now moved to either interim for future account or final for future account. And then from the final for future account to the consolidated revenue funds. What happened initially, which I was trying to explain to you, was the fact that because operations account were also being put in that recovery account, that was why you were able to see some certain drawings for some certain activities of EFCC. But they are strictly restricted to the inflows into that account, and that is what is being moved out. The recoveries in that recovery account are being given to the victims as at when due uh, you know, when it comes to individual victims, corporate entities, etc., we have the records to show, you know, the drawings from there, as well as, of course, if it is to the government, to the interim for future account, and then, of course, to the final for future account. Uh, chairman, sir, I'm very sorry, the chairman, sir, I'm sorry. 
The issue now is that uh, it is very, very difficult for us to determine what the recovery fund is and operation fund is. It is to be very necessary for the committee to scrutinize and look at it to determine what is really recovery. Because it's not an account just go, go into and spend money from there. It's not an expenditure account. No, it's not, uh, it's it's not, not an expenditure account. But you have said here that monies are being drawn from the place. Operation monies are paying to the place. So how do we distinguish the operation money and recovery money? Very, very simple distinguish, uh, honorable members. Uh, there are monies there, reconciliations have taken place. We have the records here to show which one is for what, and, uh, and the records are there. The DFA, assuming he's allowed to explain, he could have explained that. But I want to assure you that we can provide you with all the records, with a covering letter forwarding to you, what monies are for operations, the inflows and the outflows in terms of operations into that account, as well as the inflows and outflows in terms of recoveries into that same account. One thing about accounts, uh, honorable uh, members, is that uh, the figures are there. It can be traced, it can be analyzed. There is no ambiguity there. It's not going to be anything difficult to do. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree with you, but the thing is that it is against financial regulation. Number two, this recovery account, the academic area used to borrow money from that recovery account. Is that normal? Is that normal? Um, Honorable, I don't know what you mean by the accounting journey is to borrow money. Can you be specific? Um, I think, I think um, at this point, is your DFA a staff of EFCC or is seconded from the Office of the Accountant General? Is uh, seconded from the Office of the Accountant General. In that case, we need to put him on note because we'll need to ask him questions. And Deputy Clark, please put the DFA on note. Um, as the chairman was saying earlier on, all monies into the recovery account is kept in the recovery account. And in that recovery account, it's not only federal government recovered funds in the account. It's a dimensional, multidimensional funds. Is it, an is it an administrative account? No, it's a recovery account that will house all recovery irrespective of whoever is a victim, whether ministries, agencies, state government, uh, uh, private companies, and all what have you. The money is why housed uh, into that account. Okay, how long have you been in EFCC? How long have you second, been in second? Second July 2020 to date. Okay. Yes, um, because I have questions that precede that date, were some of the. Yes, why sir. would you pay salary advance from okay. recovery account? Okay, let me, let, me, let me bring you backward. As of 2015, when federal government issued a circular that all government funds should move into the treasury account. That's a directive. But before that time, the recovery account was maintained in various other commercial banks. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, EcoBank, Access Bank, Heritage Bank, UBA. These are why this recovery account was maintained. By the order of federal government that all government monies should move away from the commercial bank to the TSA, the monies were transferred to the TSA in the last quarter of 2015, and thereby in 2016, the Commission of Financial Crime Commission has written to the Accountant General that these monies are not purely money meant for the government, for federal government. It's all recovery for the whole country, irrespective of whoever is the victim. So that, trans that money was transferred back to the recovery account of the EFCC in two tranches in 2016. On 10th March 2016, 8.8 .8 billion thereabout was transferred back to the recovery account maintained by the CBN. 13 May 2016, another balance of 16.5 billion thereabout 
was also transferred back to the recovery account that was maintained or is even maintained now by the CBN. And the question that you have some salaries, other expenditures that took place there, that, is that as at that time, that's the only account the EFCC had, apart from the gift miss account, whereby the releases transfers from the Office of the Accountant General as part of operational expenses for the EFCC. And that's the only account the EFCC had. So those transfers were now uh, credited into that account, into the recovery account. You, so from that 2016, 2017... Is, 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 that, is that proper accounting? I'm trying to understand you. Yes. Because this is not the problem of the chairman of ESCC. No, this what, is your what, problem. That's what... I'm just telling you what this what transpires. But for proper or not proper, it's not proper. But actually, this is what transpires. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, this is for whether proper or not proper, it's not proper. But actually, this is what transpires. Other activities, other funds that are meant to fast track the operational activities of the Commission were created into the account because that's the only account the Commission had before around 20. 18, when operational account was opened by CBN. But before then, that's the only account the Commission had, and all those monies, whether recovery or any transfer from the Office of Casa General for the operational activities of the EFCC, is now domiciled into that account. And from there, you have expenditure going on as per the record you have seen in the bank statement there. And I also want to tell you, when you check February, 4th, 4th February 20, 2016, that's why you can have 84 million, 293,012 Naira 11 Kobo was transferred from the Office of the Account to the Recovery Account as per operational activities of the Commission. You also have on the 30th of June 2016, 19,700,000. On the 10th of June 2016, there's an intervention fund from uh, Office of National Security Advisor, 100 million, transferred also into the recovery account for the operational activities of the Commission. And then on the 28th of December 2016... I, th I, th I, think, I think we don't need all that details. You've answered my question, yes, but sir. I need to go back to the Chairman. Okay, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Nigerians are curious to know um, about the what is regarded as the NIA fund. Where is this money? The NIA recovery. As you know, after the seizure of the funds, the EFCC applied for the interim for future of the funds, and thereafter, final for future was uh, was secured. But all through during the time of these processes. The monies were being kept with uh, the Central Bank of, uh, of Nigeria, and uh, it was transferred to, 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 to government account. And uh, it has been transferred to the federal government account. So as it is today, it's with the federal government of uh, Nigeria. That's in the for future account or in another account? No, in the final for future account, I don't know precisely where the funds are, whether we have moved it to the consolidated revenue funds. But what I do know, Mr. Chairman, is that the monies are in an account with the Central Bank of Nigeria. What I don't know whether it has been transferred to consolidated I'm revenue funds. I'm going to pass you a document, yep. and I do want you to look at item number 16 there and find out if it's actually a proper destination. Okay. I've seen it. Is that supposed to be the destination? No, these are just summaries of recoveries. No, 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 item number 16. Yes. Where, you see, what you wrote at item number 16 is where it is now. Okay, the uh, NSA. Where you put beneficiary. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know, honestly. Uh, I have to verify this and come back to you. Uh, yes. Uh, and the reason I'm drawing to your attention to all this is... But the last column... You need to be looking yeah, at documents. Mr. Chairman, if I can tell you, the last column there... Yeah, you can see the beneficiary of it. 
That's what I'm saying. Should that be the beneficiary? Yeah, that is the beneficiary. Whether or not this uh, second to the last column is where it's supposed to be is another thing. But ultimately, the beneficiary is the fair government. Okay, so you need, to re you need to no, no, we need rearrange to. that document yes. so that you could, it, you know, because where we'll have documents that are conflicting with facts, yes. it undermines even the ESCC. Certainly. I have another page. Yes, the other one has to do with the Desiani jewelries. Yes. Are they still in your custody or they've been turned into cash? No, no, no. They are in our custody. It has not been auctioned yet. Oh, the, the jewelry, sir. So, I mean, is it safer to keep them in your custody if they've been finally forfeited or to just auction them? No, they have been uh, finally forfeited, just like um, uh, uh, houses and, um, and uh, vehicles, etc., etc. And the commission is uh, looking forward to the presidential committee to auction all those items and then deposit the money appropriately into... Well, when did you get this forfeiture order? We got it, uh, I think, sometime in 2019, yeah, if I remember. Yeah. I mean, given the financial situation of Nigeria, shouldn't we auction these things first and put the money to use? You know, a lot of processes uh, hindered, uh, a lot of events, you know, hindered us to proceed with that, as you are aware, sir. Um, We couldn't move on to some of these things because of uh, certain things that uh, happened. And, uh, but now that uh, the federal government has set up the committee, we are praying that uh, it will come to an end very soon when all the items are auctioned and sold. Not only that of... Uh, of um, okay, of I, think, I, think, I, think, I think members are keen to know the total value of those jewelries. It's on the paper. So can you please read it out for their own It's benefit. the estimated values that we have. It's the estimated hmm. so that's the value that of one person's jewelry. The estimated value in Naira uh, was given at uh, 14 billion 460 million uh, Naira. Yes. I think... You know, I mean, I want you to repeat that because members didn't like... Is it estimated you. value that yes. we have? Yes. No, can you tell us the figure again? 14 billion, 460 million. Is it for houses, for cars, or for jewelry? No, alone? for jewelry. Yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Chairman, please. Yes, sir. What about the value of the houses and cash? If you are in the position to say that, please. It's about uh, 80 million US dollars. 80 million US dollars. Why are you scared of money? Estimated values. <laughs> Why are you people acting like you are hearing figures and you are getting scared? Thank you. Thank you. Why should this scare you? I mean, if a woman is bold, why are you so scared? <laughs> okay, that, that will take me to another question, sir. Can I continue? The vessels seized, were they with products or they are not with products? Some are with products, some are not with products. Some are with products, some are wrong products, and you can, you can, you can uh, differentiate them. I think, I think we're there with the issue of the vessels at our last session. All right. And then you know, ask questions concerning the products and the sales. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take time out to probably set up a, it is a subcommittee, a technical committee, because we want to fiscally take a look at some of this item to know their state. The reason is this if you have an asset and it's worth 14 billion, and some of them could be deteriorating assets. We need to be sure that they're still in such a fit and proper state or, you know, if we keep keeping them, they're going to go. I'm sure you have cars that were seized. So every day you have a forfeited car, you're losing value. Why does it take so long to, act, to turn this asset into cash to fund the budget? Several factors, Mr. Chairman. Um, the court processes and procedures uh, you know, is, um, is chief among them that requires 
a very lengthy time of uh, uh, us to dispose on to this. Um, other issues, administrative uh, exchanges, etc., etc. But what I want to assure the committee is that uh, since when I come on board, we have resolved that going forward we are going to be dealing with these issues on case by case basis. We are not going to have it the way we used to have it again. And we are happy with the committee set up by the federal government to dispose not only the assets that we seized, uh, but also the assets that other agencies have seized. I believe once that exercise is over, the line is already drawn. We will be left with the new issues that will come on board, and I believe we are going to deal with them heads on on case by case basis, so that there will not be any need next year or two years, in two years' time or in five years' time, for the House to set up this type of committee again, you know, for them to investigate uh, the status of this, because we will be dealing with them as per the cases that uh, we are being uh, done with in court. I know as a matter of fact that some properties somewhere on Abacha Road in Port Harcourt were seized more than 15 years ago. Those properties were seized by EFCC. I think the people that were involved were convicted and some of them have actually served their jail terms and are out. Because of the fact that those properties have been left there, I understand that one or two of those that were convicted and have come out of prison are trying to find ways to recover those properties. You know, Chairman, part of the reason why this committee was set was to hope we can find a way of managing such things. In your opinion, what do you think is the best way to deal with? I don't know if you know those properties. There are some high rise buildings somewhere on Abacha, off Abacha Road in Port Agot. Know this case, you know, bank, blah, blah, blah. Do you have an advice for this committee going forward on how to manage such things? Because that is total waste. Mr. Chairman, thank you, Honorable Member, for this uh, question. As I said, Mr. Chairman, the primary solution to this problem is to deal with these issues on case-by-case -case basis. As the court is making pronouncement, we ought to have taken uh, steps to dispose of these assets immediately and do what we have to do by restricting the victims of these crimes. And I want to assure this committee that uh, going forward, that is what the EFCC stands for and that is what we are going to do, God willing, to ensure that these cases are being dealt with on case-by-case -case basis. But uh, on the specific issue that you asked in terms of uh, Manuel Wude, as you are aware, it has to do with the, with the Brazilian bank, uh, uh, you know, fraud of 242 million. I, I know that the EFCC, based on the, um, the records, you know, we dealt with the Nigerian assets. And uh, to the best of my recollection, I have not refreshed my memory regarding that. We have uh, succeeded in doing that, and restitution was, uh, was made to the victim of, uh, of, of the crime, which is the bank. But I, I will inquire to know whether or not we still have some of these assets that you have said that have not been, uh, uh, you know, disposed of and then, of course, restricted back to the victim of, um, of, of, the, of, the, of the fraud. Thank you very much. Now, where the issue of transparency is, you know, when, for any reason, if EFCC is seen not to be as transparent as it should be, this will affect this cooperation. What steps are you taking to raise the EFCC to such, a, to such a level that it will get easier collaboration and easier cooperation with agencies outside Nigeria? Well, um, Mr. Chairman, the EFCC have always been transparent. Our books are always open for relevant authorities to come and deal with these issues. Yes, down the years, we have some challenges regarding keeping of these records. There is no doubt about it, and that is why we are here. What I want to assure you is that going forward, we have started the process of embracing technology. As I said during my Senate hearing, we are going to digitalize our processes. By pressing of a button, we should be able to get any records that we want, irrespective of what activity that the EFCC is doing. And we are working tirelessly to ensure that that happens. We are already on rebirth. We are already on renewal. Uh, Nigerians are aware of it. The international community are aware of it. 
uh, we have done so many things you know in the last few weeks to restore that confidence um, I told the committee um, two days ago that we set up four new departments we have set up a department of intelligence we used to uh, the department of operations used to also be the department you know that gather intelligence for us now we have two separate departments we have the department of operations and that of intelligence with the sole aim of you know gathering this intelligence so that the efcc will be uh, carrying out its activities based on what we call intelligence driven investigation we want to have this intelligence to be able to allow us uh, gather as much information as possible before 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 arrest we have uh, upgraded the uh, procurement unit into a full pledge uh, uh, a department and what that entails is that uh, they are competing with other departments and the whole idea is for that department to be the living manifestation of procurement laws in this country we already have 95 percent rating but we are going for higher we want to be 100 percent you know in terms of that we have also upgraded um, the department of uh, uh, i mean the unit of internal affairs into a full pledge department we want at the end of the year to have zero query from even our internal auditors, uh, you know, before even the external audit uh, is taking place. And that is the whole idea. We are expected to be above board. We have always been above board, but we want to maintain being above board. And then, of course, we also upgraded the ICT unit into a full place department. They have their presence everywhere. But we feel that with the way we are going, the way we want to embrace technology, that we need to upgrade the unit into a full pledge department. We are, we are going on digital transformation. And I want to assure the chairman and the committee, and indeed the House of Reps and Nigerians, that going forward, EFCC is going to be different. It is already different now, but Nigerians is going to be better for it. Thank you. Well, my question is related to you know, the one you just took. It has to do, I'm sure you heard the, the phrase, looting the loot. I'm sure you've heard that. Yes. What step are you taking to restore the confidence of Nigerians in the fight against corruption by the federal government? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the people can say all sorts of things, but there's nothing like looting the loot. There is no loot that has been looted. We should know that we should be clear about it. And uh, what I want to assure Nigerians is that we are young men and women. Nigeria is the only country that we have and we don't need any, anybody to come from the sky to come and solve our problems. We are determined to do our best. We know that our mandate, and we are going to pursue those goals and objectives of the commission with the guidance of rule of law, and of course, respect for the fundamental human rights of all. Uh, action speaks louder than words. Let me not be uh, saying a lot as if I'm, uh, I'm vying for any elective post. But then, of course, our actions are going to speak for ourselves in the next couple of weeks. I assure you of that. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we'll liaise with your office, with, it, with your own um, president, to inspect some of the assets and then to see their status. We'll take pictures, cars, vehicles, and so on. We need to know with their present state so that it will form part of our report. So we will set up a clerical committee and then I think um, we'll expect that one or two persons from your office will work with them to ensure that we'll get all that. Um, Mr. Chairman, your committee is welcome. At any time, uh, just give us a head stop. As I said, we have, um, we have a directorate that is in charge of uh, Asset for Future Recoveries and Management. We have our internal uh, audit department that will assist you, and of course the Director of Finance and Account. You are always welcome, and uh, just let us know the locations that you want to visit. Uh, I will suggest that you visit Port Harcourt. I will suggest that you visit Lagos, and of course Abuja. These are the three centers that have most of these things that you would like to see um, when it comes to the issue of vessels, so um, uh, recoveries that has to do with um, illegal dealing in petroleum products as well as you know other you know um, real estate assets uh, across uh, uh, the three jurisdictions that i've mentioned thank you very much uh honorable members um our invited guests um members of the press we are going to have to draw today's session to a close shortly we'll thank the chairman for for coming we we'll thank everybody who's been part of this 
this investigative hearing will close today. They will still continue with the investigation because we're still going to have other sessions. Um, we have so, um, invited the Governor of Central Bank to appear before us sometimes next week. We've invited the Chairman of um, Niger Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency because we need to understand how they manage the assets that they recover. And then I think, they, you know, in the course of our looking into documents that have been submitted to us over the past few days, we might need, have need to invite some other person, either in, in, in the form of a public hearing or you know, um, in committee meetings, but definitely this investigation hasn't closed. We've done well over the past few days, and I wish, wish to thank all of you, especially members of the press. You've been excellent. I mean, we know how, how tough things are, and we know how inconvenient it has been for you to be with us. You've been perfect. You've been, you've been superb. Uh, we believe that you're making sacrifices for nation building. You're making sacrifices trying to support the parliament and Nigerians to actually make this country better for ourselves and for our children. Uh, may God bless all of you. So please, can somebody move a motion for adjournment? No, I think we have come to the end of that. Um, already the federal government have taken the initiative of setting up a committee under the chairmanship of the Solicitor General of the Federation. And I think they are working tirelessly to ensure that assets that are not only recovered by the EFCC, but the entirety of uh, recovery agencies are being disposed of. Uh, we have a representative from the EFCC in that committee and we believe at the end of the day Nigerians are going to appreciate what that committee will come out with in terms of uh, the mandate given uh, to them. So we don't have a, a, a time a as to time. Where, when this assessment will be discussed. I am not a member of that committee so I think you should direct your question to the Solicitor General who is the chairman of that committee in respect of uh, how soon they are going to they are going to dispose of the assets. How do you sir, see sir, the way this committee sir. have handled their job so far? Well, they, they, they are doing a good job. Uh, you know, the legislators are out there to know the process and procedures and, of course, to uh, look at the existing laws, uh, you know, and improve on them for the betterment of uh, how we do our things and how other, uh, you know, related agencies are doing their things. And we believe that uh, it will come out, uh, uh, you know, better with uh, the activities of the committee. You know the concept of democracy. You have the judiciary, you have the executive, and of course you have uh, the, the legislature. And when the legislature asks that uh, you come, you come and uh, and say what you have to say. We don't have anything to to hide. You know, it's part of uh, what will uh, entrench our our democracy in the minds of. Uh, of all Nigerians. So we are happy to be here. We have always been happy to be here. We we'll continue to come to the National Assembly to, to account for not only what uh, we are doing now, but what our predecessors have done. Because government, uh, public servants come and go, but the institution remains. So of course, you can see from uh, the caption even of, uh, of the committee, they are looking at 2002 to 2020. 20. And you know, and you are all aware that uh, I'm less than three months on the job, so, but I have to be here, you know, on behalf of the EFCC. And I think uh, things have, uh, have been cleared up. There is no ambiguity anywhere. Um, the records are there. Where they need more clarifications, we are going back to get the records uh, sent to them.